So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will now present to Troy Kors, who will give you some advice. Uh, so, uh, the floor is yours, Troy. Generally, if you break too hard, it's killing me too. Okay. Yeah, so, but also what this does, when you use just two fingers on the brake, you still have contact with the handlebar. So you can still hold on to the bike. So whilst braking, you can change direction holding on with both handlebars. Don't you have your hand open? <laughs> Normal microphone. <laughs> Give me Work better. Yeah, what you can do then, you can actually still have control of the bike while you're braking. Particularly uh, on acceleration, when you transfer from braking and you come back to the throttle, you're not fully releasing and fully grabbing. You still have connection with the throttle. So your transition from braking to release the brake opening the throttle is much smoother. You don't have that release and grab. It's just a release, fingers come back. But the main reason we do it is so that we can change direction. So sometimes you're braking going into a left and also then into a right. So you must still be able to change direction on the bike, holding onto the handlebars. So this is the first thing if the people who are using four fingers, I'd like you to start to practice using just two fingers. Okay. Now the other thing that I see, I would say about 80% of people out there on the track, is that you ride like this on your toes. Okay. On the straight, you're shifting, shifting, or every time moving your leg 
What this does, it creates instability on the bike. Because to, to actually lift your leg, you must pull on the handlebars. So when you pull, you get instability. But also when you're changing direction in the corner, you tend to pull on the handlebars because you don't have any power. So what I teach at uh, my racing school is now what we teach is we ride heels, fully forwards. The foot peg is here, not here. Okay, because what this does, this now allows me when I want to change from left to right, when I lift to, to go from side to side, I use this muscle and this muscle. Okay, when I'm on my toes, I'm using this muscle to lift. It's one of the smallest muscles in your body. So you get tired very quickly. And because you get tired here, you tend to use your arms more, so the bike gets more unstable. So what I teach is feet forward. So now when I lift, I'm not pulling on the handlebars. What this also does is when you arrive to the corner, your foot goes on the foot peg. Now this inside foot position is very important. I see many people rolling with their foot like this on the end of the foot peg. Okay? Which is quite okay, except when you need to move, it's very easy to lose your foot off the foot peg. And I'm sure you guys at some stage have had this happen. Your foot slips off the foot peg. Because you have to push when you change direction, what I teach is I put my foot in there. If this is the, the foot peg and this is the frame, I put my foot, I lock it, push it into that corner. So now I can really push on that foot. So when I want to lift, I can pivot on my ankle, like this. When I'm like this, I can't push as hard because the, the, the chance of my foot slipping is very high. So you change direction much slower in the chicane. So it's very important to get your foot, you actually lock it, push it in there. Now I can fully stand on that foot peg. Okay. So now when I change direction through a chicane, I change position, then I go heel, toe, you have to foot the same. Change direction, heel, toe. What this does, it allows you to use a lot of power on the inside, but also on the outside foot. Not just all on the outside. Because without the power, without using the power of your inside foot, you tend to pull on the handlebar again as you're picking the bike up. So this creates this instability through the handlebars because you're pulling, you're effectively making the bike do a wheelie. As you pull and you accelerate, it comes up. So you get this. Now the other part that goes with is, I see a lot of people sitting back off the tank, a fist away from the tank. Now I know this is something that they have taught for a very long time at many schools. Also there's many books written that you must keep the fist off the tank, especially when breaking, sit back. Now again what this does, it actually makes you use your upper body and you must, you must push on the handlebars. So what this does, it doesn't let the bike move, it actually locks the bike. So the bike will become unstable. 
generally it's because now when you like this, all your weight, your kilos, is pushing here around the front of the bike. So this is why the bike goes down very quickly. So I actually teach always contact with the tank. Okay. Now to do that during braking, you effectively position yourself before you arrive to the corner. So we'll use this straight here, which is a right hand corner. So on the straight, I'm back. My feet are forward, so I can shift, shift, shift. No movement. So it's, it's very stable. So it's shift, shift, shift. Before I break, I slide forward, touch the tank. So now when I break, I, I keep my weight off the handlebars by using my stomach and my back muscles. And I, push off the tank now, push myself back. If I sit back, I can't, I have nothing to push myself back, so you, you must use your arm. Again, what this does, it makes the bike very unstable because you're pushing on the handlebars. The secret to riding a bike uh, fast is the less kilos or push you can put on the handlebars on braking and acceleration, the more the bike is stable. Okay, so this contact with the feet and this, now I can position my body using this, not using this. So what this does, it actually allows you to use the controls much softer because you don't have any tension in your hands. It's a little bit like uh, when you drive your car, you don't squeeze the, hand, the steering wheel to steer. You relax, so you have feel. It's the same on the motorcycle. But if you don't have your feet positioned forward, and this, it's not possible to relax. Because you have to go on to the ground. So if you actually use this technique, now when you accelerate, it's a very light turning of the throttle. Not a tension in the, heart, in the hands. I know many riders uh, struggle with the uh, arm pump. This generally is because you're squeezing the grips too hard because your body position is incorrect. So you really need to work on this. If it's the left corner, it's here where you touch. What you don't do, you don't break and go forward like this and then, then whilst braking, try to change position, which I see a lot of people do, and the bike gets this wobble and then you miss the corner. So we pre-position ourselves. So it's effectively on the straight. If it's a left corner, I slide. Right. To right corner, slide. Touch the tank, right. Then I can keep my weight back off the handlebars using the tank. Again, you must keep your feet forward to do this. Because when you're on your toes, you can't use your core. This is why uh, all the fast riders you see are quite slim and fit, because they train the core. It's the biggest muscle in your body, as well as your legs. So you must use this. It's very physical riding a bike. So the easier you can make it for yourself, the faster you can go for longer. So your confidence goes up. But when you are struggling and getting tired and the bike is moving, very difficult to make another step. So these are the, the, the three things I, I'd really suggest is to use just the two fingers on the brake. Also having the contact with the bike and feet forward. Okay. These, these three things make a huge difference to your uh, physical feeling on the bike but the stability of the bike. The bike will be a lot less nervous. Yeah. Yep. Any questions? That's it. Outside foot, heel, inside foot, toe. And it's effectively a change position, touch the tank, heel, toe, into the corner. 
Change position. Touch the tank. Heel. Toe. Into the corner. It's not a into the middle step. Step. Move to the side. Turn. It's one movement to the other side. Then move to feet. Again, I see a lot of people. They exit the corner. Then they sit in the middle and then move to the other side. You don't do this. It's actually with the right to a left. You go. Straight from the right before you arrive to the left, you're already on that side of the bike. It's what we call at the school a uh, hip flick. You effectively lead with your hip, follow with your body. Lead with your hip, follow with your body. Okay, so what that does, it moves the, the main mass of your kilos already on the side of the bike that you the way you want to go. Not later. So, yeah. Like this. Slide. Slide. It's not just this. I see a lot of people with a lot of upper body hanging off. It's generally because you're off the tank, so you can't lean off the bike. You hang off. So the bike does this and you'll go wide. Yeah. Every time. This is where I yeah. Every time. So it's very important for braking but also for acceleration to have this contact. <coughs> and for cornering. Because now if I want to turn, look at the bike when I do this. I can pull the bike. If I sit back, so I pull the handlebars. <laughs> this makes the bike do this. Yeah, so it's very That's important to use your feet. Yeah, so Ride the bike. Okay. Yep. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, before we go to the restaurant, I uh, present you Sir Mecker, who will explain in a few minutes the most important changes on the new S1000 RR 2015-2016 model compared to the previous one. Und natürlich möchte ich I want to uh, okay. I want that you buy after that some bikes, so I explain you what's new on the bike. Um, when we started with the first bike, it, uh, from uh, 2010 and 2011, the bike was really extremely stable during the braking areas and keep the line. So then we tried to change uh, from the next, uh, from 2012, 2014, that the bike get a little bit more faster in the corner that you can change the line but the bike lose some stability in the braking areas and it was going a little bit nervous so and now with this bike we try to find the right point so the bike is now easier to change the direction and the bike is as well stable so this is one big point and the other point is uh, that you have some that you have a huge horsepower 190 8 horsepower, every bike has minimum this kind of horsepower or even more. Um, and I can tell you with the new uh, noise regulation EU4, the bike will keep this horsepower as well in the mid-range. So it's a really strong engine and you have uh, the traction control. This is one of the big benefits, so you can really adjust the traction control in the slick mode or in the race mode with the plus and minus button. So if you go out with a brand new tire, you're in the slick mode, so you can go in minus three or four, or whatever, what you like. So you have a lot of traction. And if you feel that uh, your, your rear tire lose a little bit uh, the traction, so you can make small steps. One step means just a little. If you go from in the slick mode to minus seven, then you always more free than in the race mode. So if you go from race mode to minus seven, then you come close to to slick. So this is a big, big step. Then you have the blipper in both direction, up and down, and you can easily change from from normal gear pattern to, to race shift. Then you have a pit lane limiter. This is a huge step, step. And for those guys who won't really ride sometimes on the road, you have as well a cruise control sounds funny, it's the same funny stuff as heated grips, but if you're on the highway and you have to st keep just uh, riding one hundred click because you have too many rudders, then it makes sense. 
So what we did as well, we a little bit adjust. It comes all from, from the World Superbike. In the end, we just find the right spot for, from the, the mounting point of the swing arm. This was a little bit like that. We changed a little bit in the springs and uh, we improve uh, the dynamic uh, kick, uh, suspension system. Yeah, in the end it was over 150 pieces which we changed in this bike. And if you have a bike from 2010 or 11, just jump on the bike and after that you have a problem. You must sell your old bike because this bike is just great. <laughs> Test it and uh, yes, if you have any further question, I'm around here and you can come to me and I will give you a hand. Okay, thank you guys.